Thank you. Thank you, Brother George. I have a prayer concern that I'd like to share with you, most of you who have not uh, known yet. Uh, Sister Metes Borneo's uh, mother in California passed away last Friday around 6 p.m. So she is there right now. She left uh, yesterday early morning. And her mom is uh, really getting weaker this year in and out of the hospital. And, uh, She's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, she went out, she went to be with the Lord peacefully, and uh, pray for Mathes and Clyde who's working today, and uh, Kevin, Sarah, and uh, Rachel, and uh, of course the relatives here, the Benedict family, and, and uh, uh, Ate Linda, who are close uh, relatives with, with Mathes. And so let's let's just spend these few moments um, silently. Let's pray individually, and then uh, okay. please pray for the family uh, individually today, silently in your mind. Let's just spend some moments. Father in heaven, we have just heard a testimony of uh, a sinner saved by grace, the life of other Jews. And uh, what a, a powerful testimony and evidence of how you can change a life miraculously. And also, Lord, earlier we have sang how great you are as our God. And Lord, today we also would like to recognize your sovereignty in our lives as you have taken to be with you my best one in California. I pray for your comfort to the whole family, for strength as they go through these uh, times of uh, bereavement and sadness. I pray for your comfort. pray that you will provide for them and keep them safe, Lord, as they gather there. And uh, as your words also will be proclaimed by the pastor that will conduct uh, services and may this be a testimony of your God, of your power, and of your grace. I also pray as we learn together about your church, that uh, you will speak to us once again today, Lord God. And we thank you for this opportunity to learn together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday will be our uh, church anniversary, so we are going to have a speaker, Pastor Carl Johnson, from pastoring of uh, the Grace Point Gospel Church in the city, and uh, he is actually excited to be with us and to share the Word of God and to celebrate the last week our anniversary. And uh, this, our message today will be the last for our mini-series about the church. And uh, Lord willing, first Sunday of October, we'll start our new series about uh, the subject about stewardship. And uh, would you believe that stewardship also is discipleship? And that's part, they, they, they go along together. And so our message today is about authentic community. As a church, as a church family, we are, we are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have all differences, we have all different views, we have all different um, doctrinal issues in life, but all in all, we are one in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the beauty of, of being in, in the family. In our biological family, not everyone agrees with everything. You see, you can say to your kids that this is what we're going to eat for the rest of your life. They have their own taste and they have their own uh, preferences in life. So in our families, we have, we have beliefs and we have convictions uh, so that we respect each other. And, and, and we give way to each other. So in, in our community, that's exactly what's happening. And instead of being discouraged, we should have a positive attitude and looking forward to what the Lord Jesus Christ will do in these experiences in life. And so authentic community, and we're going to deal, we're actually, some of us are dealing with 
with relationships that are not good. We call it painful relationships. Because all the relationships is doing to us is pain. And, and, and we ask the question, how, how will I get away? How will this pain go away in my life because of this relationship? Now, as we look at the Bible, please uh, read with me in 2 Timothy chapter 4, <laughs> verses 9 to 22. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 to 22. Do your best to come to me quickly. This is Apostle Paul asking Timothy. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus and Troas, and my scroll specially the parchments. Alexander, the, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him, because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Verse 18, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Eubulus greets you and so, the, so do Prudent. Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters, and the Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts. In this final letter, or, or the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy and to us, is about a lot of things in his life. Uh, it includes being uh, being eager to meet with Timothy where he is in another area of ministry. He wants him to be with Paul because Paul was writing this epistle in prison waiting for his execution. The final, the final years of his life before the Roman government finally uh, took his life because of his stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of this, we, we are going to relate to the heart of Apostle Paul and today, we're, we're going to talk about dealing with difficult and, and painful relationships because we like, whether we like it or not, we are going to. It's not, it's not a question of, of uh, if, but it's a question of how. And as I said a while ago, may, maybe some of us are already uh, in the middle of dealing with difficult and painful relationships. But as we learn together today, we're going to also discover what we can do to not only ease up, but to be able to overcome these painful relationships in our lives. And so in the life of Apostle Paul, as an example, first of all, we're going to look at dealing with people who disappoint us. In his letter, uh, verses 9 to 13, Paul expresses his heartache to Timothy. And as we read a, a while ago, uh, he mentioned about Demas, who love the world, and, and also later on, uh, although Mark was very dear to him in this writing, but we'll find out that Mark also disappointed Apostle Paul earlier in his first missionary journey. And so here Paul is nearing the end of his life. He, he just finished saying, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have finished the race. And I'm ready. And then here he was uh, writing this to Timothy. And then just for a moment, let's let's find out what happened with with Demas and Mark disappointing Apostle Paul. 
Now, first of all, Demas is mentioned as one of Paul's key ministry people in his letters to, first of all, to Philemon and also to the Colossian believers. In, in Philemon chapter 24 and Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, something happened to Demas as he is ministering with Paul. All of a sudden, he decided to just bail out. And leave Apostle Paul by himself. 